All right, suppose we have a paving company that's found that its marginal cost in dollars for paving a road uh, with asphalt is given by that cost equation. All right, so that's the cat of cost for dollars. Where x is measured, we're going to remember that's in hundreds of feet. All right, where x is less than 80. So apparently they can only do 8,000 feet, right? If you took 80 times 100, that would be 8,000. All right, over 0 to 40, use four subintervals. So again, we're going to need four rectangles. Using the left endpoints, because the book only does the left endpoints at this point. They do do right endpoints later on in 4.7, which I'll let you watch those videos when we get to there. All right, so we're only going to do the left endpoints this time. So I'm going to break it down into four endpoints using the subinterval to approximate the cost of paving 400. Cost of paving 400 feet of road, remember, that is x of 40. 40 represents 40 hundred, which comes out to 4,000 feet of road. All right, so that is why we are looking from 0 to 40, right? Because that's where the x value stops. I'm not going to draw the picture in this case because you don't have to have the picture. Since I did the picture in the last examples, and the book does pictures. You can watch the book. They'll draw the pictures out for you. But you don't have to. So in this case, I'm actually not going to draw the picture for you. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to break it down into what you have to find. All right, so first of all, I want four rectangles, so four areas. So I'm going to take my 0 to 40 and break it into four subintervals. All right, remember, those subintervals will have a width of delta x, which I take my a and my b and my subtract them. So b minus a, not b minus b over n, so b would be 40, a would be 0, I want 4 rectangles, so divide by 4, so 10. Each rectangle is going to have a width of 10, that's my width, and my delta x. Alright, so if I redraw my subintervals, I'm going to go 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. And if I drew this out, this would give me my area 1, this would give me my area 2, area 3, area 4. So that's where my, my four rectangles will be drawn. I'm going to use the left end point. So meaning area 1, I'm going to use 0 to find the height. Area 2, I'm going to use 10 to find the height. Area 3, I'm going to use 20 to find the height. Area 4, I'm going to use 30. So remember, the areas are found by taking the change in x times the function value using my endpoint. In this case, we're going to use the left ones. All right, so to approximate my area using the left sum area, well, my change in x is 10, so it's going to be 10 times. Well, the first area, I'm going to use 0, so derivative, so c prime of 10, plus 10 times my next area, which would be, oh, I did 0 instead of 10. 10, this would be 0, right? 0. Next one would be c prime of 10. All right, then it'd be 10 times c prime of 20. That's the so area 1, area 2, area 3, and then area 4 would be 10 times c prime of 30, right? Area 1, Area 2, area 3, area 4, which if I drew rectangle, that's where they would be drawn. All right, so again, since I don't want to feel like multiplying by 10 every single time, I can pull that out. And so I'm going to just take 10 times the sum of all these values. So remember, I'm plugging 0 into this derivative equation. So I'm going back up here, and that's where I'm finding this value. So when I take 0, plug it into that equation, well, I get 1,800. Now I'm going to plug 10 into the derivative equation. So I'm going to take 10 squared, divide by 6, minus 20 times 10 plus 800. And that comes out 1616.67 one, of around 2 decimal. Again, it's, it's dollar amount, so I'm going to round to 2 decimal to the penny. Uh, then the 20, when I plug 20 into that, it comes out 1466.67. And when I plug 30 into it, 30 if you can't read that. I get 1350. So there's my height. So those would be the heights. Again, this is why I didn't draw this one because the heights are fairly large. All right, but you can. And the book does it. So if you watch the videos the book does in my lab, they will draw them for you. All right, so it's going to be 10 times when I add up those four heights. C 
6233.34 and so 6233.4. Alright, so it cost about $62,333.40, which again, just make sure you pay attention to what the book asks you to round to. Sometimes they ask you to round to different places. So if they ask me to round to the to the thousands place, it would be 62000 would be the approximate cost. All right, so just make sure you're careful when you're doing these. Read carefully what, the, what they want you to round to. All right, so that's an example of using the left end points. The right end points would be very similar to that. You would just interchange this 30, would go 40, 30, 20, and 10. And that would be the only difference. All right, but we didn't do right end points because the book doesn't do right end points in 4.2. All right, we will stop there. That finishes up 4.2. Uh, sort of the theory behind what we're going to do in 4.3. 4.3 is a big section. It's the fundamental theorem of calculus, and I actually break it down into two set of notes because it's so big and there's so much important information in there. All right, we'll stop there. Pick that up in the next video.